Hello everyone, welcome to a new quick edit video, this time with a rather tricky image of which I actually wasn't sure about editing it since it doesn't look that good, but I decided to still give it a try. And right here you can see the base image. Since there's a lot of contrast going on, I'm going to be creating an HDR image inside of Adobe Lightroom. Then I will also be doing some base adjustments in Lightroom and finally switch to Photoshop to finish the editing. But before I start, let's check out the before and after images first. Alright, and as I just said, this is the base image of the HDR. So we have this one as the underexposed image and this image for the shadows. To merge the HDR in Lightroom, I'm simply selecting the three images, right click on them and go to Photo Merge HDR. As you can see, not much has changed right here in this preview, but if I select the auto settings, Lightroom will automatically adjust the exposure. And in this case, it does a pretty good job actually. And I think I want to start from this point with the auto settings. So let's hit the merge button. And once that is done, you can see the changes Lightroom has applied to this image. So there isn't much to do, but first I want to activate the lens correction settings. And in this case, the remove chromatic aberration setting is really helpful. As you can see this green edge on the mountain right here, now check this out. When I activate this setting, this edge is gone. Then let's also enable the profile correction and go back to the top. You can see I already have changed the profile to Adobe Standard. This will just help make the darkest areas a little bit brighter. And since I don't have to do anything in those general adjustments right there, I want to increase the base saturation some more and then head right to the local adjustments. Here I'm starting with the gradiated filters and you can see I have just applied this one mainly for the foreground of course. And that's because I want to have some more contrast in here. So let's increase that. Then I can further boost the contrast and give those reflection and the rocks some more structure by just increasing the clarity. And maybe let's also add some texture, which will make those rocks a little bit sharper. Okay, then let's head to the radial filters. Here I have applied a few more. Let's start in the upper left corner. I want to use this one to add a nice glow effect around that bright area by simply increasing the blacks. But since I want this area to be a little bit warmer than the rest, I want to increase the temperature just a little bit. Okay. Uh, then let's go on with this radial filter in the center. I want to use this one to brighten up this area a bit by increasing the whites. And let's also add some clarity, which will give this area some more punch. All right, then I have this big one for the upper part in the center. And I want to use this radial filter to apply some kind of dreamy look. And that's why I'm dropping the texture. And I also drop the clarity. And this will just make everything inside there a little bit smoother. And I can also increase the blacks. And this will reduce the contrast and this way help create the dreamy look. All right. Now we have one radial filter left up here and on this part of the mountain I want to add some more structure by increasing the clarity again and increasing the dehaze. Okay, then that's it for the local adjustments. Now let's do some color grading. Right now I think the green tones are a bit strong so I want to drop the green saturation and drop the blue saturation and maybe increase the yellow saturation a bit. All right. Of course, I also want to apply some split toning, but instead of applying a warm color tone to the highlights, I think I'm applying a cold color tone actually to fix a yellowish color cast. And I think that looks quite good. 
and some final color grading will be done in the calibration depth all the way down. Yeah, just want to play around with the red, green and blue primary hues. That means I'm dropping the red hue in this case and increase the green hue. Maybe also add some saturation here. Let's also add some saturation to the blue colors. Okay, nice. And then finally, of course, I want to sharpen the image. Then let's switch over to Photoshop to finish this image. All right, and I don't think there's much left to do here. I first want to enhance the glow on the upper left corner a little bit more. For this, I'm applying a new layer and switch the blending mode to hard light. Then I'm picking the brush tool by pressing B. And I also pick up a color from that bright area. And let's reduce the brush opacity to around 10%. And now I'm just painting in there a few times. Okay, I really like how this looks. Then let's merge those two layers real quick by selecting them and hitting Ctrl E. And then let's check the Nick collection for some nice effects. And one filter that works really good in this case is the polarization filter. Now let me just increase the strength so you can see what's happening. It just darkens the blue part of the sky a little bit more and also boosts the overall saturation a bit. And in this case, it looks really cool. And I'm going with something like that. Okay, I don't even think I need to mask out anything here. Then let's check the Nick collection one more time. And in this case, I actually think I can enchant the green tones of the trees in the foreground a little bit more. For this, I'm using the foliage filter with the first preset, I guess. And let's drop the foliage. Actually, I think I'm going with the second preset here. And let's increase it quite a bit. Okay. Now there is one last thing I want to apply and therefore I need to go to the Nick collection one more time. And here I'm going with the classical soft focus filter to apply a heavy dreamy look. And I'm going with the third soft focus preset and just apply it. All right, and since I don't want to have this over the whole image, I'm applying a layer mask here. Grab the brush tool again by pressing B and then let's paint over those areas where I don't want to have that glow effect. All right, and that's it for editing this image. I hope this was interesting and helpful. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.